can you guys hear me i cannot hear myself okay my name is chetan kumar i am an engineer at a company called pernix data what i want to do today is to motivate you guys to think about storage in your virtual data centers i want to highlight a challenge that you guys face in your data center every day go about how this becomes a problem why it is a problem and how it is a problem and show you a solution which can actually help you take a dig at this problem and show some sample data to illustrate the potential of this problem uh, potential of this solution first and foremost storage is a shared resource and as soon as i say shared resource first thing that comes to mind is the problem of dynamic resource allocation and fairness in the resource allocation the second problem is heterogeneity of the access there are too many application with different types of io requirements you have applications with random io requirements read heavy requirements there are applications with write only kind of profile and there are applications which may be sequential as well then there are there are these few administrative tasks which tend to be mostly large block size and then mostly sequential and most of them are also write heavy so when you have this kind of heterogeneity it's very hard to satisfy the requirements for all of this let's see how the problem manifests itself before virtualization you typically had multiple hosts each running a single application but all of them were connected to a shared storage but within a host the application was predominantly a single application and then this issued predominantly a single type of io request to the storage so basically shared storage was seeing the heterogeneity but within the host it was it was not an issue because application would issue predominantly a single type of io profile now with post uh, virtualization what has happened is this heterogeneity has transferred from the storage to the host itself a single host runs multiple virtual machines each virtual machine runs sub different types of application and each application issues uh, different types of io request which means the heterogeneity that was seen at the storage is basically now transferred into the host itself so the host also becomes part of the problem now how do you deal with this kind of uh, challenge well traditionally storage has been very good in uh, solving the throughput requirements when i say throughput requirement basically it wants to complete as much work as possible before acknowledging the work back to the virtual machine but if you ask it to acknowledge very frequently then the storage loses efficiency faster medias have claimed to solve this uh, problem of uh, faster re uh, or uh, lower response time so there are new storage designs which are basically using this flash media offering hybrid solution offering auto tiering solutions but in my opinion that is not sufficient why because there are still too many speed breakers in the io path let me give you an example if you consider 100 meter sprint race and 110 meter 10 meter hurdle race the runners are fast in both cases but if you look at the world records there is a big discrepancy between the two uh, races 100 meter sprint race the world record is 9.5 seconds for 110 meters it's about 12.8 seconds even if you normalize the hurdle race the 100 meter hurdle race would come down to about 11.3 seconds so even though the runners are fast if the runners are fast there is a huge gap between the two races why because the hurdles actually slow the runner down and it's the same thing here in the storage too many speed breakers you have the hpas you have the switches you have the storage processors these add tiny microseconds of latency which is not good enough for flash because flash themselves operate at microseconds of uh, latency can this problem be solved i think so if you look at the problem fundamentally the problem is because storage wears too many hats it has to provide data services it also has to satisfy the performance requirements so the question that i want to ask is can you transfer some of the hats 
to somebody else where they can handle the requirements more efficiently than the storage itself. Fundamentally, can the performance hat be transferred to somebody else? That is the question I want to answer today. Luckily, there is a solution. If you look at today's data center, what you find is bunch of ESX hosts that are connected to shared storage that is offering all the services, the data services, the data compression services, duplication services, whatnot, along with the performance services. What you can do is basically buy some flash media, stick it into your server, and build an acceleration tier on top of it. So Pernix Data today provides a software which helps you bundle all the flash devices in different hosts into one cluster tier, tier which will be used to accelerate the data that is coming from the virtual machines. All the other services will be continued to be provided by the primary storage. Accelera acceleration tier is there only to provide the performance requirements for your virtual machines. The beauty of this solution is, it doesn't matter what storage you have. You can continue to use your main primary storage, use your ESX host, buy some flash, put it in, build this tier, and start seeing the acceleration. I don't want to dive into details because a couple of my colleagues have already given enough, uh, this, uh, enough knowledge on this one. There are two uh, presentations that were given yesterday evening and today afternoon. I would highly encourage you guys to check that out. At the end, I'll, give a, uh, I'll mention the names of those presentations. What I want to show today is some data that will prove the potential of this solution. A very typical scenario, single host, single VM, uh, with one flash connected to a primary storage. The reason I chose this example is though, so that I can uh, make the point very clear. So in this case, the virtual machine was issuing read-only access to the primary storage. As you can see, oops. As you can see in this graph, hold on, okay, it's not working. As you can see in the uh, graph, the blue line, which indicates the I.O. that the virtual machine was seeing. Initially, all these I.O.s were coming from the primary storage. The green line here in, uh, indicates the I.O.s that were coming from the primary storage. So initially, everything was coming from the primary storage. But over a period of time, along with the data that was being given to the virtual machine, the same data was also returned to the flash, meaning that the flash was keeping a copy of all the data that were accessed so far. Eventually, what happened was, when the virtual machine requested the same data, now the data was serviced by the flash, instead of request going all the way to the primary storage. So because of the shortened data path, the response time was super fast, which meant, which meant that the virtual machine could now get a lot more IOPS than what it was getting from the primary storage. You can see that the IOPS went from 12,000 all the way uh, up to 50,000. Let's look at the latency. As I said, initially when the IOS were coming from the uh, storage, the latency was the latency that VM saw was pretty close to what SAN would have provided. But as soon as the IOS started coming from the flash, the latency dropped to flash levels. In fact, it's almost like 200, 300 microseconds range. So this is tremendous. Another example to show what happens when the VM is issuing writes. In case of writes, it is. Uh, it is uh, acceleration from the word get-go. Luckily, you don't have to uh, get the data from the pri primary storage and put it in the flash. As soon as the write comes, that data is first written to the flash, and an acknowledgment is sent back to the virtual machine immediately. And this happens in the write-back mode. Now, virtual machine sees that the uh, writes are happening too quickly because the acknowledgment is coming much faster. But in the background, this acceleration tier is making sure that the data reaches the primary residence. Your primary storage is still the primary residence of the data, but now the uh, migration happens in the background. But virtual machine doesn't see this one. Virtual machine sees that the uh, acknowledgement has come so, so, uh, pretty quickly. So that means now it is very happy and it can issue more rights. So that's why you see that the uh, rights issued by virtual machine reached almost like 22,000. But in the background, all these writes also went to the primary storage, but they happen to go at a much lower 
uh, space. So that's why you see this green curve, which is taking lo a longer time to go to the primary storage. Let's look at the latency. As I said, the blue line, which is basically what the virtual machine would see, is pretty close to the flash write response time, which is the orange line here. In the background, when the data was also sent to the primary storage, but by this tier, the response times were much higher. So this is what the latency the virtual machine would have seen if it was writing directly to the storage. But luckily, because it was writing to the flash, this latency was actually hidden by the virtual machine. So virtual machine is happy, your data is safe, data is sent to the primary storage in the background. A slightly more complicated workload. What happens when there are reads and writes together, when the virtual machine is issuing them together? So in this case, there was a burst of read and then some uh, trickle read IOs, a burst of write, again trickle IO, trickle reads, then burst of reads. So the workload basically represent what a typical transaction based application would do. Burst of reads, burst of writes, no issues. What I'm showing in this figure is what a virtual machine would have seen. As you can see, the reads were same as before, something like 52,000 IOPS, and then the writes were about 20,000 IOPS, like I showed in the previous graph. Next, I'll show you the reads and writes that were seen on the flash. In fact, you can see that the two curves are almost the same, meaning that reads were serviced by flash, writes were returned to the flash. So what happens on the data store? Data store only sees writes. As I said, this acceleration tier doesn't store any data permanently. It's only helping the virtual machine to reduce the latencies, which means your written data is eventually sent to its primary residence. In this case, your primary storage. So the writes were sent to the primary storage in the background, but virtual machine doesn't see the delay. So same thing, the latency is uh, now broken down. In what I have done is basically I have broken down the latencies for reads and writes, which is much easier to understand. That's why I've broken down into two separate graphs. This graph is basically showing the read latencies uh, that the virtual machine would see. Also shown is the flash read latency and the data store read latency. As I said, because all the reads were serviced by flash, there is nothing that is going to the data store. That's why the data store latency is almost zero. The latency that the virtual machine would have seen, the blue line, is almost equal to what the flash read latency is. Same thing with writes. Uh, this graph is showing the write latency the virtual machine would have seen and also the latency of writing to the data store. So this is very interesting. Virtual machine, which is the orange line, is seeing flash latency, which is the purple line. But data store, whenever you do a write, is actually seeing much higher latency. But this is hidden, this latency is hidden from the virtual machine because the writes are happening in the background. Virtual machine will get an acknowledgement Im immediately as soon as it is written to the flash. But the tier actually takes care of writing the data from flash to the primary storage in the background. So that latency is hidden from the, from the virtual machine. So this is a significant boost your virtual machine gets in terms of response time. So that is very, very important. Another important question, what happens when there are multiple virtual machines accessing this virtualization tier? No problem. So in this case, all the virtual machines were running predominantly read workload. This is just a sample experiment to show the potential uh, of this solution. Single virtual machine increased all the way to eight virtual machines, all of them running same uh, read-based workload. So you can see that when there was only one virtual machine, uh, reads were pretty close to 45,000 or so. As you increase the number of VMs, the IOPS remained at peak value, but it was now equally distributed among the VMs. At eight VMs, basically I ran out of CPUs, meaning that all the CPUs in the machine were fully committed. So there was a slight dip in the performance. Nevertheless, the distribution was very fair. So this is just to show you that the acceleration tier can handle even multiple virtual machines when they're issuing lots of requests. So far, what I've discussed is a very, very simplistic scenario because there was only one host which was servicing the virt uh, virtual machine which was running on, on that host. But you might ask me, what happens when I have this, 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 right? So this is, this is the typical case that you guys are familiar with. What I just showed you is a, probably a very, very simple, simplistic case for you. But no issues. Take a flash, stick it in each of those servers, 
stretch the cluster across these. Now this giant clustered acceleration tier can service all these virtual machines which is running on the on these ESX hosts. Unfortunately, I don't have data point to show uh, how it can scale, but you keep an eye on, on these blog sites and then the, uh, the company website for more information. There are also two excellent talks given by my uh, colleagues that will go over the architectural details of this uh, product. Uh, what happened? But if you want to learn more about this product and want to do it now, please drop by the booth 2011 for a longer conversation. Thank you.